Hey, so you probably just finished up uh, working with me either on Zoom or live in a classroom for the Recession Proof Your Real Estate uh, class. If you haven't, have fun watching this video. Uh, we cover a lot of topics um, on mindset and awarenesses that real estate agents need to have. At least it's the awareness that I wish I would have had uh, over 25 years ago when I started this business. So, And so this is the recording of one of the classes, not specifically your class, but one of the classes. So um, in the video, there are chapters. So if there's uh, on the seven awarenesses or any specific topic that you're looking at wanting information from, you can just skip right to that chapter. So again, I really appreciate the fact that um, you took the time to not only spend three hours with me in a classroom, but, uh, but some of you I know took the leap to get into uh, the real estate production program. Enjoy it. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. My name is Gary Carpenter. I'm with Master Real Estate Academy. We'll talk to you soon. So now, here's some awarenesses that I think every real estate agent should have, okay? Awareness number one is to focus on sellers. A lot of us get into this business and we join a team or we do whatever and we start to chase buyers. There's a reason why, I don't. if you guys, can I explain to you why you do that? It's easier to go unlock a home it's easier to open the door and let them explore the home. And then it's easier for them to tell you, yes, I like the house, I wanna write an offer. You have to be skilled in order to be a seller's agent. Now, because of the class action lawsuit, you are going to have to be a more skilled agent in presentation skills with a buyer. You're gonna to have to be able to present to them what the commission's all about. You're gonna to have to be able to get a exclusive contract signed with the buyer like you would an exclusive contract with the seller. And you're going to be able to have to bring value to a buyer in case they're the ones that are going to have to write a commission check for you. So all of these things are happening for the better of the industry. When it comes to marketing, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit, you cannot really market to buyers. Now you can, but it's going to cost you money. Right? You could run an ad on Facebook and generate leads. You could get an expensive website, pay a company like Boomtown, and you could spend money on ads that they will help you create and they'll manage it for you. And you'll generate 40, 50 buyer leads a month. For the most part, anybody who's ever done that business or worked that business, it's not an easy business. They usually take 18 to 24 months to... Now, I'm not saying that it's bad because a lead's a lead right? But for the most part, I will tell you right now, you go to any MLS in the country, go to your MLS. I want you to Google and I want you to find out who are the top real estate agents in your market right now. They are listing agents, your top five, probably top 10 agents in any market you go to. They're probably an agent that works their database and has been in the business for a long time. They're an agent who works investors and have been in the business for a long time. They're either an agent who also then has a team underneath them. Okay, You are going to want to be a seller's agent. So I want you to take this in. I want you to soak this in that everything that you learn, everything that you concern, all the marketing dollars that you spend, all the phone calls that you make, it is to look for somebody who owns a home. Buyers will find you. Sellers who sell their home will have to buy another one. You will work your database and people will be referred to you. You do not need to spend money for this stuff. Know that listings are the name of the game. It's always been that way, always will be that way. You must list to lack. This business is simple. It's not easy, but it is simple to really understand what you need to learn. So now, once you understand what you need to learn, you need to go learn it. Winning sellers and not just listing, meaning that you're going deep into relationship with people. Here's one of the things you have to understand. Focus on what sellers want, okay? And not just what I want. Focusing on that relationship long range. Don't have your blinders on and be thinking just this one transaction. So now, learn the skills of working with sellers. Number two, awareness. Mindset of a high producer. Uh, never get bored of the basic. You have to do them because it's just part of the business, right? Blend of confidence and uh, um, of humility. Again, now remember, this is the mind of a producer, a high producer, not somebody who's new. Having a crystal clear picture of what your North Star is. 
what do you want to accomplish? Okay. So now let's talk about never getting bored of the basics. First off, the basics in real estate is generating referrals, maybe just generating leads in general, getting those at bats. You're not going to get them all, but you don't need them all. You just need enough that's going to make it for you. But you got to be able to see, here's the thing. In order to generate referrals, in order to generate leads, you actually have to do lead generating activities. That's the beauty of this. Okay. So now once you generate a lead, then you've got to be a major leaguer in the real estate business to be able to schedule an appointment. Now, here's the beauty of this. If you're scheduling, if you're getting leads from your database, from your sphere of influence, you don't necessarily have to be as good or as skilled as if you're going on a FISBO or an expired or somebody that you don't know. Would you all agree with that basic premise? Thumbs up, right? You agree with that, but you still need to know the skills. And if I could teach you the skills that you'd need to know to go on the hardest of appointments, to schedule the hardest of appointments, to schedule the hardest, to, gen to generate the hardest of leads, would that make you better prepared to work the simplest? Yes? See, we all want the simple, but we're unwilling, a lot of us are unwilling to do the work that it takes in order to do behind the scenes in order to make the money that we need to do, okay? All right, so building strong relationships. This is so important. If you're not good at building relationships, you gotta get good at it. So here's the thing on all these things. There's training, there's teaching, there's videos, there's YouTube, there's, you know, there's podcasts, there's all this stuff that we need to start to invest in time, energy, and money in order to get better at these basics of real estate. World-class follow-up, right? Drip campaign, following up with people, um, making sure that we have a world-class service and a presentation. Systems, we gotta have systems in place, right? So those are some of the basics of real estate um, that, uh, and we could probably add a few more, but those are just a few. Um, now, you need a blend of confidence and humility, right? I've seen so many real estate agents that um, struggle with the humility part of things. Um, and uh, um, But anyhow, so let's talk about these. Confidence is earned with work that we do during the unseen hours. I alluded to that earlier, right? So when you look at this and you say, all right, I look at a major league baseball player, and now all of a sudden they show up on the field and they're playing in a World Series, if you looked at their life and you looked at their career beforehand, it all started probably when they were five, when they got their first glove. Now, sure, do some of them have natural talent? Yes, but it was natural talent that had to be developed over time. Now, the beauty of real estate, if you can nurture relationships, if you can forge relationships, if you can start a conversation, all the other stuff is a system that can help you go deep, deeper into relationship. It's earned through demonstrating, right? It's demonstrating performance. And um, it's earned through the word you we keep to ourselves. Okay, so let's talk about that one for just a second, okay? So in order for you, if you demonstrate your skill of world-class, if you list a home, go through the listing process, take care of your client, work with the buyer, take care of your client, all that type of stuff, you will earn more business. Do you guys agree with that, yes or no? I would almost bet that the top producers right now that are, that are, that are doing 40, 50 transactions a year are earning the business, okay? And I would almost bet that it's earned through the keep the word that you keep. I have a core value. Those of you that have been with me know it. Um, it's do what you say you're going to do, sometimes more, just never less. So don't overpromise and underdeliver. Underpromise and overdeliver. But here's the thing: at the beginning of the year, how many of you set some New Year's resolutions? And anybody here set any New Year's resolutions? Did you make any goals? For the year. You did? Okay. So now when you make a goal, you got to reverse engineer that. And then you got to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable to the things that you're going to do every single day. Now, the next thing is being humble. So it allows you to stop, um, to stay open to feedback. That's important. As you're growing in this business, you, you can't be the know-it-all. It allows you to be open to having a coach or a mentor. 
right? If you don't have a coach, you don't have a mentor, you probably need to get one. And remember that no matter how good we get, we can always get better in this business. It's having a crystal clear picture of your North Star. High performers don't just sit around and hope for it or dream about it. They shift their focus to the process and start working on what is right in front of them right now. So what is it that you should be doing right now? You should uh, asking that question, right? High, perform high performers focus on what they can do today to inch them closer to selling 40 homes, 20 homes, 24 homes, 100 homes, whatever it is, whatever your goal is, it's important that you make sure you know what your North Star is and the things that you want to accomplish so that you can start to go to work on them. The next thing is you want to be asking these questions, okay? What can I do this quarter? We look at our business from quarter to quarter. We do plan for the whole year. I've got my five-year goals. I got my 10-year goals. But I look at this and I say, okay, what is it this quarter that I can do? What do I have in control that I can do? What can I do this month? What can I do this week? What can I do today? What can I do right now that's going to better my business, better my relationship? All right, make progress systematically, daily, consistently on little mundane things or the basics, okay? The, the ones that win, again, if you guys, if you're doing a screenshot of something, I would do a screenshot of this. I would go out and search this dude out and start watching his YouTube videos because he's awesome when it comes to uh, being successful. He wrote a great book too. So the ones that win are the ones that don't get bored of the basics because the ones that lose are the ones that give up when the basics get boring or difficult, okay? Now, we talked about basics in baseball. If somebody stops doing those basics, typically they're gonna be off on their game. And when you do the basics of real estate, you're getting prepared for that buyer's appointment and you're getting prepared for that, uh, that, that listing appointment. The ability to refocus. Gang, we're human. So being human, uh, we are all going to get distracted. Have the awareness that you cannot stay focused for a long period of time. It may be 60 minutes, it may be 90 minutes, but the thing is, gang, you have to set the atmosphere in order for you to be focused. You'll never improve something that you are unaware of and you will never fix something you are oblivious to. So the first step to having an awareness of when you are unfocused and doing something that is important, right? So that's the first step is having an awareness. When you are distracted, distractions come from all other ways, right? You have to create an environment that's gonna less the distraction. If you're gonna make phone calls and you're set 90 minutes to sit down and start having phone conversations, you cannot be on your computer. You cannot have certain apps open that are gonna alert you. You need to turn off the alerts on your phone because here's the thing, we all get distracted. We get the alert, we get a text message, we get something we're like, and all of a sudden we go down this rabbit hole of stuff when we're supposed to be building our business. When is my mind wandering, right? When does your mind wander? Like right now, are you wandering? Is your mind wandering? Are you thinking about something else you should be doing today? Well, see, once you do that, once you, that's that whole little voice. We all have this little voice in our head that's talking to us, telling us what we should be doing or what they, what our little voice thinks it should be doing. And we got to train the little voice, right? Once you have an awareness, you can start to dial it back in and get refocused. That's the skill that we all need to learn is to get refocused. See, if you sit here and try to think, I'm never gonna get, I'm gonna stay focused, I'm gonna stay focused, guess what? You are going to get unfocused. The skill that you need to have is to get refocused, right? So anybody know Lou Holtz? Anybody know this guy, right? Great football coach, right? He has this little acronym, WIN, um, what's important now. So wherever you're at something, what's important now? What should you be doing now? Time management grid. The U on this stands for urgent. The I on here stands for important. So things that are non-urgent and non-important. So there's, there's basically, there's four quadrants, right? Quadrant number one is something that and so if you're sitting there in your day and you're in your next hour and you say, okay, what's important now? And what you're doing 
Is it a quadrant one, a quadrant two, a quadrant three, or a quadrant four? So if you're sitting here, and let's just use an example. You get a phone call, little Jimmy's at school. The principal says he broke his leg. Is that important? Absolutely. Is it urgent? Yes. So I would tell you to get off the Zoom and go take care of little Jimmy because it's important and it's urgent. Is this class urgent? Some of you maybe, because you're going to learn something today that's going to save your real estate career. But for most of us, it's not urgent. Is it important? Yes, because we're trying to take steps to grow our business. So from that, that's quadrant one. Now, when you look at quadrant two, when you look at things that are non-urgent and important, right, That that is, ex for an example, that is this class. Now, let me ask you a question. When we look at date night, is that urgent? Is date night urgent, Jen? No, it's not urgent. No. Is it important? Yes. Yeah, it's important. When does it become urgent? Yeah, when you're <laughs> getting the papers filed. It right. might be too late then, but that's typically when it becomes urgent, okay? Now, when you look at things in quadrant three, you look at things that are not important. They're not important, but they're urgent, okay? Those are usually time pressure distractions, typically someone else. Kids, spouse, colleagues, friends, a lot of those times. So if you're sitting here and you're in an activity, let's say you're doing your 90 minutes of, of lead gen, it's not urgent unless you're broke, right? If you're Josh and you're really trying to get your business off the ground, um, it's urgent and it's important. So you're really going to scrutinize how somebody else is taking your time. Now, if you have a spouse that doesn't really understand the industry, but they also know that they you need to make money. So everything that you should be doing in your real estate business when you are away from your family should be an urgent and important matter. Okay? You're either, there's only two things that we do in this business. We either service clients or we're finding clients. If you're not servicing clients, you should be finding them. Okay, that's either through door knocking, that's through cold calling, that's through reaching out to your database, that's doing open houses, whatever the lead gen activity is, you should be doing that. The fourth quadrant, no value. So get rid of it. Okay, so we got a couple more slides here and then we're gonna take a break. We need to figure out what things we have control over and what things we don't. You have no control over what happens on social media. Okay, we, a lot of us will get caught up on the drama on social media. Um, but we don't have any control over that. We do have control over what we post and try to gearing uh, uh, a reaction or a non-reaction. Politics, you have no control over that. Uh, high interest rates, again, no control. Class action lawsuits, no control. The economy, no control. Now, what do you do have control over? I believe you have two, you have control over, 100% control over two things. Okay. All right, so the next thing is the power of relationships, okay? So when we look at this, just write these things down. Think long range, okay? When you're thinking of a relationship, you gotta think return on investment. How can I go deeper? Should I celebrate their birthday? Should I follow them on Facebook? Should I mail them? Should I email them? Should I invite them to events? Should I pop by their house? Yes, if you knew that they had um, I don't know, Josh said $8,500. If you knew that they had five deals, you do the math on that, 50 grand of your money, would you treat them like gold? Absolutely you would. See, that's an awareness that you need to have, okay? And you have to start to do the work in order to earn it. That's the behind the scenes work. Gang, this doesn't just happen. See, we're chasing business all the time. And believe it or not, if you have a big enough database, you don't have to chase it. It's already there. It's already happening. Law of attraction, people are already seeing it. They just don't know it. And they don't know you, even though we assume, because that's what we do, right? We assume that they know we're in the business. They're going to do business. We also assume that because somebody's doing business with us right now, they're buying a house with us or selling a house with us, that when they run into somebody, that they're going to introduce us. We assume that. That's an awareness you need to have that you can't assume it. So you have to ask, right? Creating a world-class experience. You have to create, when you're working with a buyer from beginning to end, it's gotta be a world-class experience. When you're working with a seller, it's gotta be a world-class experience from beginning to end. 
that they want to brag about you. Gang, it needs to be a world-class experience just to be associated with you. How many of you would like to learn how to create a world-class experience by them just knowing you? Anybody want to learn that? Well, I'm not going to teach it today, but I do have a program that I'm going to talk to you about that um, I can help you with it. Okay. Next one is connecting on a deeper level. You've got to go deeper with these with everybody that's in your database. Power of referrals. You got to understand and have the awareness of the power of referrals. You're going to spend less money. You're going to have to invest less money into your business if you start to generate more referrals from your database. Okay. Asking for business. Okay. Before you have to ask for business. See, gang, that's the behind the scenes. I know everybody in my database. Here's the awareness I have. The awareness I have is that everybody in my database is going to run into somebody thinking about buying or selling this year. The question is, are they going to think of me? So I have to become top of mind with them. Gang, that is the struggle. That is the boring crap that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? But a lot of it can, be, can become systematized, okay? And then you have to become an ask. I don't mean an asshole. You have to become an ask hole. You have to ask and you have to ask and you have to ask. Gang, I've been reading. I read the whole Bible last year. I'm reading it again this year because I had such an amazing experience with it. If you've never done it, try it. Um, but in the Bible, it states, ask and you shall receive. It doesn't say assume and you shall receive. It doesn't say think and you shall receive. It doesn't say sit on ass and you shall receive. It says ask. So that means you have to be, you have to be out there. Well, Gary, Gary, I don't want to become a nuisance to people. Well, gang, if they like you, love you. You're not going to be a nuisance, and it all depends on the message that you're sending them every single month through email, through messaging, everything else. If you're sending the right message, if you're giving the right content, they're going to love you. They're going to fall in love with you. The magic question. Who wants to know what the magic question is? A few of you already know what it is. The question is, are you asking it? The first thing when you're asking the magic question, you're, we're going to call up, you're going to small talk, maybe throwing a little chuckle factor. I always try to get people to giggle a little bit, right? It could be, hey, haven't seen you in church in a while. Did you give up, right? You know, it's just a giggle. It's not like a, oh. <laughs> it's just a giggle, right? Because if you can get somebody to giggle or open up a little bit, see, most people want to talk, right? Because what's the number one, who's the number one person you love to talk about, Tara? Yourself. Yes, you. You love yep. to talk about you. So then you so you have this conversation. You have this small talk that we all have. Hey, how are things going? How are the kids? How, you know, how's the weather? You know, whatever it is. And then you then you start up and you go in, hey Tara, the reason why I'm calling is I'm expanding my business and I could use your help. If you knew somebody who was thinking about possibly buying or selling real estate, um, would you feel comfortable in introducing me to the people that you care about. Now let's dissect that for a second. Step two, the reason I'm calling, I'm expanding my business. Step three, Tara, if you knew somebody, I'm using the names, if you knew somebody who was thinking about buying or selling, would you feel comfortable in introducing, not referring, introducing the people that you care about to me. Now, gang, let me tell you something. If you don't ask it like that, it ain't going to work. Anybody here who's lived any kind of a life has referred somebody and they've had a bad experience. Anybody here ever refer anybody and you're embarrassed that you referred it? Gang, see, most people have done that. And they because they like you, they'll tell you yes to it, but they'll never do it. Because they've said, you know what? I had that bad experience. I ain't never going to refer anybody again. And so from this, an introduction is better. Would you feel comfortable introducing people to me? Yes, absolutely. So now here's the other science part of it. People can imagine 
an introduction. They can't imagine a referral. For the most part, they can imagine a referral when it was a bad experience. So use the word introduction. If you knew somebody was thinking about buying and selling, Jennifer, would you feel comfortable introducing the people you care about? Right? So that's what you want to ask. And then when they say yes to that question, now, if they say no, let's handle this one because, again, we all got negative Nelly in us or negative Ned. Well, what if they say no to that question? I'm so, I got phonophobia. I'm so afraid they're going to say no. Great. Here's the deal. You save yourself time, energy, and money when they say no. Just turn it around on yourself. Say you're looking for, this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to jump on for 90 minutes. I'm going to call my 160, my 300 people. And I'm going to, my goal is to find people not wanting to refer me. If you say that to yourself, first psychology, okay? So when you do find somebody, you're going, hot dog. <laughs> Everything's normal. Hot dog. Say it, everybody. Say it. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. You say hot dog. <laughs> And then you just move on. So you ask them the question, then you reassure them. They say yes to the magic question. You say, you know what? Thank you so much, Tara, for agreeing to introduce the people you care about. I want to reassure you that if you send me anybody, that I will treat them like family. I'll take care of them like kings and queens. And here's what I'll make sure that happens, is that I will keep you informed all along the way. Fair enough? Yes? All right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tara, while I do have you on the phone, let me ask you this. Who do you know who, maybe in your family or in your neighborhood or possibly at work, that might be in the process of buying or selling a home? Eight <laughs> out of 10 times of that? I can't think of anybody. But here's the thing 20% of the time, you're going to get an answer. And sometimes you may not get the answer today but you may get it later in the day, or you may get it a day later. Gang, let me tell you what this dialogue does, okay? It is the top of top of mindness marketing. So if you say, what's the step one? You call people and you ask the magic question. That's step one in this whole thing is you go through this dialogue with them and you get a yes from them, you close on them, and then you confirm their information. And the reason why you want their information is so that you can communicate with them on a high level for the rest of your life. You want a phone number. You want an email address. You want a mailing address. You want to connect with them on social media. So in this conversation, you're asking them the three places where the people they care about hang out the most. It is in their family. It is in the neighborhood. And it is at work. So when you ask those three, you're turning on the RAS, write this down, R-A-S, the Reticular Activator System. Has anybody ever read the book or watched the movie, The Secret? Have you heard of something called the Law of Attraction? Okay, let me ask you this question. Have you ever bought a new car? Okay, yes, so when you, drove that, when you drove that new car off the lot, other than noticing how it plummets in, uh, in value, do you, did you start noticing other cars of the same model, but maybe just in different colors? Yes. Yeah. See, that's the reticular activator system. The retic If you Google that, the reticular activator system is a filtering system. You start to notice things that were already in, your, in, in front of you. So like when you ask the magic question, if you knew somebody was thinking about buying or selling real estate, would you feel comfortable introducing the people that you care about? You turn it on. And all of a sudden now, the people that you ask that question to go and live their life like they normally did, but now they start to notice conversations of people thinking about buying. Now, when you turn it on, you turn it on for about 24 to 48 hours. So what you want to do with this, once you have it, so Andrew, Tara, if I have a conversation with you, then what you're going to do is you're going to have a complete communication. And the way that this works, step one, you have the conversation. And you go through this dialogue, you get all of their information. Step two, you then an hour, two hours later, before you close down for the day, you send them a text message. And the text message is, hey, Andrew, Thanks so much 
for talking with me today and agreeing to send the people you care about that are thinking about buying or selling real estate to me. And oh, by the way, have a good time on your vacation. Hope your kids are feeling better. Hope your wife's migraine goes away. Whatever it is that you talked to them about, that you connected with them about, that you talked about. And then to complete the communication, see, this is me. I'm taking out a pen, people, a pen, right? Or pencil, whichever you want. And I am writing them a personal handwritten thank you note. And I'm writing the same thing that I texted them. Andrew, thank you so much for chatting with me on the phone this week. Appreciate it. It was great catching up with you. Hope you have a fun time on your vacation. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for agreeing to send the people. Gang, you've got to do this every time. If you look at every 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 person you want to return on investment for, you have to have this conversation and you have to complete the communication with them. That starts the whole open-mindedness marketing with them. This is a step-by-step -step system on exactly what you need to do to start to increase the odds of getting business from people that are naturally going to run into people thinking about buying or selling. And the question is, are they going to think of you? Number six, top of mindness marketing. Oh, we're going to step right on into this, right? I said step one of top of mindness marketing was asking the magic question and completing that communication. Okay. The next thing is, now, Andrew, let me ask you this question. Let's go to you. Um, you had 300 people in your database. Yes, sir. Okay. So now that seems overwhelming. You got to call every single one of them. Now, let me ask you, of all 300 people that are in your database or 171, do you have all the spouses' names? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. You believe so, but you don't know for sure. I'd want to know that answer. So now, do you have all the spouses' phone numbers? Do you think it would work to your benefit to have all of them? Yes. Do you have all of their email addresses? No. Do you have all of their mailing addresses? Yes. yes. Do you know if you're connected with all of them somehow, some way on social media? Uh, No. Okay. See, that's what you would do your first three months because you're losing a lot of money right now by not have, not doing what I'm telling you right now. You're going to go through this whole database. So let's look at this. So 300 seems like a lot to go through in 12 weeks, right? But yeah. let's do this. Let's divide that by, let's say you're going to call five days a week in 12 weeks because I know it's going to build my business and it's going to help me take care of my North Star. So, so now the 300, I'm going to divide that by 12. What does that come to? Like if we had to divide 300 divided by 12, what would that be? 25. So that's 25 a week. So now if I divided that by five, what would that be? Five. Five a day. So let me ask you a question. Do you make five phone calls a day, have five conversations, send five text messages, and send five thank you notes? Yes. Do you do that every day? 100%. I mean, I'm not telling you that don't work the other business that you're doing. Josh, I'm not telling you not to work Boomtown. Tara, I'm not telling you not to work Boomtown leads. I'm telling you to work the most important thing right now that is called delayed gratification. We all want the low-hanging fruit. A low-hanging fruit is a FISBO. Low-hanging fruit is a Boomtown lead. It's people saying, I'm ready to do something now. What you want to be doing is you want to be systematically building that business over time. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah. Now, Here's the beauty of this. While you're doing it, you're going to get leads, but they're going to be the best leads that you've ever gotten because they're going to be referrals or introductions to people within your sphere. You follow me? Yep. And you may find out if somebody's thinking about buying or selling that is actually in your sphere. The one thing I want you to think of when you when I think of top of mind this marketing, when you look at that database, I want you to think of that as a pond. So if you're if you've got a pond and you're going to throw that rock in the pond, it's going to make a splash. See, that's an awareness to have. And then the second thing that happens is you start to see the ripple effect. When you look at that same analogy and you look at top of mind this marketing and you say, OK, now you had a conversation with them. Splash ripples. How do we keep the ripples going, Andrew? Keep throwing stones in.
keep throwing stones. So now the analogy of the stones is marketing. So now you're going to market to your database. You have a conversation with them, a very meaningful conversation where you ask them, I want your introductions. Splash, text message, splash, ripple effect. A note card, splash, ripple effect. And then you post something on social media, you're connected with them, they see it, splash, ripple effect. You send an email, something of value. Maybe you send words in an email. I don't know, maybe you get creative and send a video with words in an email. Splash, ripple effect. And you do this constantly throughout the year over and over and over again what you want out of it through the splash and the ripple effect they're going to run into somebody thinking about buying or selling real estate the question is are they going to think of you are you posting are you engaging on facebook are you emailing every week are you sending out video are you getting better at your marketing are you mailing something are you having client appreciation events are you bringing value on a daily, weekly, monthly to everybody in that database. You want to become an attractor and not a chaser. Because Boomtown and all that stuff, even though it has its place, that is all chasing business, okay? I wanna teach you how to become an attractor and how we attract business to us daily, weekly, monthly that are thinking about doing something now or down the road. I know that if you can do 40 transactions in one calendar year, it will change your life, okay? You will be able to do everything financially that you wanna do for you and your family and people around you. So when we look at a marketing system and I say breaking it down to not what, not the content, but the frequency is that you should be mailing something of value to those 176 homes every single month, okay? They need to see your face, your contact. You need to have, have a call to action of some sort in that mailing every single month. It could be a postcard, it could be a newsletter. You need to call them four times a year. At the very minimum, two. One is to ask the magic question. The other one is maybe to invite them to an event. You need to see them two times a year. At the very minimum, at least one. You need to email them. 36. We email 52 times a year. So, and then social media, it's free. And you need to invest in your people, in your database, whether it's 100 people or 300 people or 176, doesn't matter. Every single month, they need to be getting a message from you in the mailbox. The other thing that happens when you start this system is you start to generate uh, more business with buyers, sellers, and referrals. You need to have a consistent follow-up system. That's just three is you don't want to send canned content. It needs to be pretty original. Program will help you attract and not chase business, okay? It helps you to build your influence over time. Realize you don't have time to do this yourself long range. So long range, in the beginning, you could do a lot of this yourself, but for the most part, all of my systems are turnkey and I pay somebody to do a lot of them. Um, number seven, understand that lead conversion is easier with a consistent touch program, meaning that you will generate more leads, you will convert those leads with a consistent marketing program. All right, so your database is your biggest asset. We call it a sphere of influence. You can call it a C, you know, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. It is your biggest asset. Um, all the people that you have met, or at the very least, they know who you are, right? So that's everybody in the database. So now when you look at this and you look at your database, there's your Mets and your haven't met. And your Mets are people who have given you permission. Haven't met are people you will have to purposefully meet. And so how do you purposely meet people? It's through door knocking, it's through cold calling, houses, it's through referrals, it's through networking events, it's coaching your kids sports, it's being involved in private groups, it's everybody loves the person that makes their life easier. So the idea is to get your haven't mets and move them over to your mets. So you're gonna meet them, you're gonna have a significant conversation with them, you're gonna get an email address, a phone number, you should do this now from then on from the rest of your career in real estate anybody new you meet you should make sure you get all their information and then the good news is it's your past clients it's your sphere that's people that are in your phone it's your gmail it's your excel docs it's your crm people on social media so is there any questions when it comes to top of our top of mindless marketing again it's very simple 
mail call C, email social media to the people that you know. You're going to go deeper into relationship with them. Um, and you're going to become top of mind with them so that that way, once you do ask that magic question, they're going to refer people to you. So the compound effect, that's a book. So my suggestion is you go buy it, the compound effect. And what it's going to teach you is it's going to teach you that it works both good and bad. People aren't accidentally broke in this business. It's because they're not, they don't have awarenesses for one, and they're not doing things little things every day that are creating amazing results. That book will help you with it. It's the little things that we do consistently that create big results. So just know that when it comes to Thank you so much again for attending the Recession Proof Your Real Estate Business and, and I appreciate it so much. So like this page um, so that that way you're getting updated information about real estate. And one of the main things that I teach on um, that we utilize in our business, my wife Linda and I, is um, top of mindness marketing. And that's really going deep into relationships with our database. So if you're look interested in looking more on that, want some coaching on it, all that type of stuff, again, just give us a, give us a shout. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.